Hey Fina here from Fina Reads. Welcome, welcome back. Today with a book haul, which is a format that I actually don't do very often on my channel, she said, as she just did one last month. <laughs> <laughs> but usually I don't do book hauls very often, only if it's a special occasion. And this time it is actually a special occasion because June was my birthday month and I got a bunch of amazing presents from you amazing people, which I'm incredibly grateful and thankful for. And while I was prepping for the video, I just thought, well, let's talk about all the books that I got since the last one. It's going to be a long list. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, but. So let's just dive right in. Starting with fantasy books, and there's a whole stack of ebooks. I don't know, do ebooks stack? I have no idea. But there were a couple of uh, sales and special events where you got free fantasy books. I don't tend to grab too many of them, only if I either know the author or I've seen this book before and I've heard good things or whatever. Um, I never grab everything that is out there because I already will not be able to read through all the books that I have, especially not the ones on my Kindle. I don't even want to count how much I have. Well, just don't talk about it. So let's talk about the ebooks that I got. One is The Sin of Kings by Daniel Thomas Valente. This caught my eye because of the cover. And then after I got it, I think I heard, uh, was it Andrew talking about it? And he said he read it. I'm not quite sure, but I've heard other people talk about it since then. The next three are from one of those grab a free ebook types of events. And I got one of those prequel novellas, which is called Glass and Sass by Laura Greenwood and Arizona Tape. This is an urban fantasy series and it sounded fun. It's something like she has a shop where she creates wands and she found a new recipe that is not liked by the magical elders or something like that. But she just wants to do it anyway. <laughs> So it sounded like fun. Um, the other two are by Brandon Noble, which is an author that is currently getting quite some hype because he has one of his other series uh, in Spiffbo right now. One is called The Fractured Prism, which sounds like a, a Hunger Games type of story. And then the other one is A Dagger in the Winds and I just grabbed it because it was also free at the same time. And it's an author I want to read because his spiffbo entry, first of all the cover is amazing on the spiffbo entry and then I just, it sounded interesting. Then I saw a Twitter post by E.G. Doble who was making his two ebooks available for free. Um, I think because his third one just came out and that is The Crown of Omens and The Horn of Greaves. And that was also, I've never heard of the author, um, but I loved the covers. So I just grabbed them, thought like, okay, this might be something I actually would read just based off of the covers. We'll see if I'm right or not. <laughs> Next one that gave away his ebook for free is Adam Holocomb with a necromancer called Gum Gum. I've heard a lot of good things around the booktube community. He is one of those um, more hyped indie authors, especially with that book. It's supposed to be a cozy fantasy with a grandma that knits hats and socks for zombies or something like that. Continuing on the fantasy side, I got the new release in the Between Earth and Sky series. This came out in June, so I got it immediately. I had it on pre-order, one of those Barnes & Noble specials save a lot of money when you pre-order that kind of stuff. So I got myself the third book. I read it in June immediately as well, and I talked about that in my June wrap up. So if you wanna hear my thoughts on that, you can jump on over there. And then in the same vein of last book in a release, I got myself the whole set of the Rainfall Saga trilogy. I'm still not sure. <laughs> So I got myself book one and two, and then the amazing Twainy or Nancy got me book three, A Cask H Blade for my birthday. So thank you, thank you so much for that, Nancy. I've already read those book three in June, book one and two in May. If you wanna hear my thoughts on that, again, look at the review that I've done for this, look at my June wrap up and then my May wrap up, and then I'll tell you all about these. But hey, that's four books in my haul that I've already read. That's exciting. <laughs> Moving over into the science fiction section, that is John Mars's The Marriage Act, which were kindly gifted to me by Jake and Stacy from the Bookish Drumber and the Chapter Conundrum. That was my uh, birthday gift from them, or one of them. The other I will show you later. But this sounds like a Handmaid's Tale, just with a different topic. So instead of uh, having surrogate women, this is about you have to be married. Otherwise, life can work and you're kind of forced to be married in Britain. 
So it says here, a right-wing government believes it has the answer to society's ills, the Sanctity of Marriage Act, which actively encourages marriage as the norm, punishing those who choose to remain single. I love stuff like that. <laughs> And I know John Mars is one of Stacy's favorite authors. At least she loved The Passenger by him. So I'm excited to read another book of his that I know she enjoyed his writing already. And I'm excited to see if this is something that is actually as cool as it sounds. Alrighty, moving into the horror category. And one is a Kickstarter that I backed by Ellis Johnson, which is an author that I've just talked about in my five underhyped fantasy sci-fi series that you probably haven't read yet. <laughs> Uh, which is her Chase and Daniel series. It's a four book series which is a little bit more on the Lovecraftian fantasy horror side with gothic vibes. It's really cool. Go check out that video if uh, you want to hear me talk about it a little bit more. But anyway, she started a Kickstarter for uh, another horror book of hers called In Her Mind A Darkness and this is kind of a special edition and I just saw that art of it. I have no idea what the book is about. I just backed it. Like seriously, that's how much I love this author and I trust her after just reading this one series. Plus I really like the vibe of that whole cover and the special edition that she's putting together and um, the ebook just arrived. So yeah, I'm definitely excited to read more by that author. And the other one was an Instagram find. Again, cover by. I have no idea what it is about. It, I'm not even 100% sure it is horror. The cover and the title sound <laughs> like horror and it's called The Ocean Hugs Hard by Eric Evadisian and it's I think a new release. I just saw it on Instagram somewhere on my Instagram feed and in one of my mindless scrolling situations I saw that pause and was like okay let me check that on Amazon and throw it on my wish list and then I saw it was on sale for 99 cents so I'll just grab the ebook and We'll see. <laughs> Next up, I have a stack of thriller books. These are all birthday presents. Um, they were all on my wish list because I realized, hey, I've read a lot of fantasy sci-fi in the last years, but I've kind of ne neglected my love for really good thrillers. And that is actually a genre that I've read a lot of in the past. So I kind of wanted to get back to it. Um, and I started with doing a little bit of research and seeing, okay, what are like kind of the, the newest things and the interesting authors that I should check out. And it starts with um, Under the Storm by Christopher Carlson, which was gifted to me by Diamond. So thank you so much, Diamond, for picking this one for me. Amazing color combo, amazing pick. Thank you so much for that. This is a book that I actually found in an article of new thriller releases that you should read or whatever, you know, one of those clickbait titles thingies and it was not this book but the second book that came out this year and when I was looking at it and when I was reading through it I was like "Ooh, okay that sounds good but let me read the first book first. So this is a Scandinavian thriller from a Swedish author. He is like a big thing in Sweden right now. I don't know. He uh, has a PhD in criminology from the University of Stockholm so hopefully he knows what he's talking about. And Scandinavian thrillers in particular are actually something I really enjoy. I have a lot of Scandinavian or, you know, Northern European authors that I really enjoy. Iceland also has a set of really good authors with really creepy thrillers. Anyway, that is a different video topic. But this sounded fantastic. And um, it's small town, Sweden vibes, people of Merbeck, Marbeck, however you pronounce it. I apologize to any Scandinavian person out there. But it just sounded good. And again, the color combo, the cover, <laughs> the vibe <laughs> it was giving me was just so good that I threw it on my wish list. So thank you, Diamond, for picking this up for my birthday. The next book is kind of in the same vein. Book two of Tana French's. Um, I actually don't know if this is a series or whatever. That second book <laughs> was on that same list as the Swedish book. And it sounded, again, very interesting. This is more small town US type of vibes. And that is also something that I love. So if it's not Scandinavian thrillers, small town vibe is great. And then anything psychological thriller is great. Like those are the three keywords that you get me immediately with. And that's where this fell in. Uh, Nancy, thank you so much for picking this one up. I'm really excited uh, about reading this. Also, Tana French is a pretty big name in the thriller world, isn't she? And I don't think I've ever read anything by her. So, you know, two plus, po plus points for this book. Correcting myself, small town vibe, but Irish, not US. Well, 
Potato Potato. The next book kind of falls into the same category as the Tana French book, partially at least. Big name authors I haven't read a freaking book from. <laughs> So that's why uh, All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda was on my wish list, and I picked this particular one because that was in the, on the March pick, I think, for the Thrill Chill Kill book club over on the Bookish Numbers Discord. And I saw somewhere that it was compared to A Girl on the Train by Paula something rather, which is a book that I read a while ago but really enjoyed. So that comparison got me excited. And, you know, I don't know anything about Megan Miranda. I have no idea what she, like, what her typical keywords are when it comes to thrillers. But that's why I threw that on my wish list. So thank you, Jessica, for picking this one for me uh, as my birthday present. I'm really excited about reading this one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the last book in the thriller category is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead, which is the second book Jake and Stacy picked up for me. So thank you so much for that. Um, this ended up on my wish list because I read a romance book by the author. I'm blanking on the name right now, but it was a more political um, romance novel where he, I think, started a political campaign and she worked for him during the political campaign, something like that. And it was fun. I enjoyed the writing style and then I realized at one point, oh, she writes thriller too. Well, let's check out her thriller. And this one sounded the most interesting. This cover is looks like fun. <laughs> I don't know. Can you describe thrillers as fun? Sure, fun roller coaster ride. Let's let's go with that. So, but that's why this one ended up on my list. Let's move over into the nonfiction category. The third book that Nancy Crazy Girl <laughs> picked up for me is Tom Falton's biography. And this ended up on my wish list because I have a psychological fascination with people thinking bad about actors when they played a role of a of a villain character. He, Draco Malfoy, and uh, Joffrey in Game of Thrones. I don't know what the actor's name is, but those two, the stories that I've heard about fans hating on them and, you know, fans bashing them online and all that kind of stuff because they cannot separate the person, the actor, from the character that they played, I find that fascinating. I know his biography is not about that and it's more generally about him and growing up an actor and being part of the Harry Potter franchise and then life afterwards, but I'm still interested in him as a person and learning about his life. And the last bookish category being a romance book and that is Red String Theory by Lauren Kung Yesen, a book that ended up on my wish list because I saw it on some book box type of thing, but the book box ended up being too expensive for me. It was way more expensive than the book and there was a bunch of stuff in it that I don't care. Anyway, long story short, I like the premise of it. A little bit Chinese superstition and signs and stuff like that and it sounded really really good. So Karen, I'm super thankful that you picked this up for me because this sounded like a different type of romance. Last category, non-book items, since we talk about birthday stuff, right? I got spoiled by my husband as well. He gifted me this awesome Lego set here, which is the Tales of Space Age by Lego. They are supposed to be like little postcards and you can connect them together so they uh, make one big image or you can have them separately. And I actually also saw someone using them as book dividers, which I kind of did as well then. <laughs> and they look really cool. So you can guess what I did on my birthday because I took the day off from work. I uh, listened to an audiobook and build Lego stuff all morning and it was awesome. Like it was the best morning ever and it was the best birthday ever in a long time. Listen, even as a grown up, you can enjoy Lego and I will never forget how much fun I had as a kid with Lego. Lego is just awesome. And trust me, I'm already looking at other Lego sets that you know, don't take up too much space, but that are cool like these. I think it's awesome that they are doing something that even adults can enjoy and do and then do something with them. And the last item that I got for my birthday is this sweater. And you're probably all like, what is this character on there? I have no idea what you're showing here. So this is a character from the German Sesame Street. Her name is Fienchen. That's a little snail. Her name is Fienchen. And Fienchen was the nickname that my parents gave me when I was younger, when I was a kid. My mom kept calling me Fienchen. So when I saw this sweater, I was like, parents, <laughs> here's the perfect birthday present for me. I love it. I love to have myself on a sweater. <laughs> Of course, that's not totally not what this is, but I thought it was funny and it, it was a different kind of gift and I really appreciated that. Alrighty, 
That was my long list of things that I got in the last month. Ay ay ay. <laughs> Which one of these books caught your eye? I want to know. Which should I prioritize of the books that I haven't read yet? I want to know from you. Please let me know. Please help me with this. <laughs> and then don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button if you did like the video, of course. And then I hope I see you soon with my next video. Till then, have an amazing rest of your day. Bye.